Donald Trump is proven right by the very people a judge in New York tried desperately to silence. Nikki Haley has suddenly become the person every billionaire in America wants to get elected. More hostages are returned to Israel, and new data out will certainly have every American voting against Joe Biden. Thank you guys so much for liking and sharing these videos. It really helps me out, so thank you so much. Also, make sure to check out my 13-minute interview with Senator Ron Johnson from earlier today. These senators rarely go on shows like mine, and it was a treat to have his uh, time. And he shared some really important information about President Joe Biden. Now, I'm not sure whether to laugh or cry, but Senator Mitch McConnell's new polling data is out, and he's less popular than Senator Bob Menendez. You know, the senator who was paid off in gold bars and had $400,000 worth of cash stuffed in his bedroom closet. The guy that sold our national secrets to Egypt. He's better liked than Mitch McConnell. I mean, gosh, this guy needs to retire. Nobody likes him. It's crazy. All right, now sadly, in some parts of the United States, a McDonald's extra value Big Mac combo is now $18. Extra value? More like extra money. $18 for one person to have a combo meal at McDonald's? Are you insane? I would never pay $18 for a combo meal at McDonald's. This is ridiculous. Let me know in the comments down below. Are, are combo meals $18 where you live? And would you pay $18 for a combo meal at McDonald's? I want to hear from you, so please let me know in the comments down below. Donald Trump has been calling special counsel Jack Smith a deranged person. I figured this was just hyperbole and Trump was being Trump. However, Jack Smith has announced today that he wants the federal government's permission to investigate everyone who ever followed Donald Trump on Twitter, liked one of his tweets, or shared one of his tweets. Jack Smith plans to use our taxpayer money to review all the people who could have possibly interacted with Donald Trump on the platform Twitter. I mean, <laughs> this is absolutely deranged. Now, I'm not going to be on there because I've never interacted with Donald Trump on anything, but that's absolutely insanity. What a waste of my taxpayer money. A new report out shows the average family is now spending an extra $11,400 to live in America. To say life has become more expensive would be an understatement. Remember when the media and Democrats trashed Trump's tax cuts because it would help his rich friends? Well, maybe it did, but it also allowed families to keep on average $6,000 more per year of their hard-earned tax money. But now, in Biden's America, it's $11,400 a year more just to live the same exact lifestyle. Now, almost all Americans vote with their wallet, and <laughs> this tells me that a lot of people are going to be voting against Joseph Robinette Biden. Now, just yesterday, House Speaker Mike Johnson seemed to state his intentions to leverage aid for Ukraine in exchange for improving the situation at the southern border. While Democrat Senator Mike Bennett admitted the border is overwhelmed due to transitional gangs smuggling people, he said that he still believes that the border help and the Ukraine help should be separate bills. Don't combine them. Don't slow down helping the people of Ukraine. What about helping the people of America? What, a, what about protecting America is so wrong? It's crazy to me. I'll keep you updated on what they actually do with our tax money. A group that is looking to spend tens of millions to defeat Donald Trump has just backed Nikki Haley. The billionaire-backed group 
named Americans for Prosperity Action, made their decision after internal polling to put forward Nikki Haley as the best to beat Donald Trump. A statement from the AFP group read, AFP Action has never engaged in a presidential election before, but as we said in February, to write a new chapter for our country, we need to turn the page on the past. Donald Trump and Joe Biden will only further perpetuate the country's downward spiral in politics. Now, as you can imagine, Florida's Governor Ron DeSantis did not react well to this information. Uh, he actually lashed out at these new billionaires endorsing Nikki Haley versus endorsing him. He said, congratulations to Donald Trump for securing the endorsement. Like clockwork, the pro-open borders, pro-jailbreak bill establishment is lining up behind a moderate who has no mathematical pathway of defeating the former president. So basically, he's jealous on one hand and then points out, good luck, you guys are about to spend millions and millions of dollars trying to beat the most popular person who's ever run for office. Now, in an interesting twist, J.P. Morgan Chase's CEO, Jamie Dimon, also suggested that Nikki Haley be put forward as the strongest potential candidate to defeat Donald Trump. Dimon called on Democrats his fellow Democrats, to consider supporting Nikki Haley, emphasizing the importance of preventing a second term of Donald Trump. So he wants Biden out, but he also wants help from Democrats to block Trump from getting back into office. However, Jamie Dimon did express his willingness to work hand-in-hand -hand with Donald Trump should he win the election, but Dimon said, he is worried about ultra MAGA voters and advocates and excuse me, advocates for more respectful and inclusive dialogue when it comes to the political landscape. Now, notably, influential figures like hedge fund billionaire Ken Griffin are also reportedly planning to back Nikki Haley. So she has definitely caught people's attention as the more easygoing easy to work with pro-American person, but we'll see if she's up to the task of beating Biden and Donald Trump. Now, remember yesterday, I told you how billionaires are going to be speaking up more and more, uh, and they are looking for a docile candidate that they believe that they can control, and that will also lower the temperature between Democrats and Republicans so that the country can move forward. And it looks like just about all of them are lining up behind Nikki Haley. Let me know your thoughts down below. What do you think? Is this a waste of money? Is this smart? I'd like to hear from you. All right, now this is wild. A new letter being used in the Donald Trump New York City fraud case shows that not only did Trump's business not hurt anyone financially, Deutsche Bank was actively trying to recruit and win business from Mr. Trump as a client because he was considered a whale that would make them a lot of money and refer a lot of new business. Now, this is super hurtful to Letitia James and the biased judge in New York because it proves that not only did Trump pay these people back and not financially hurt them, but it was the banks themselves that were frothing at the mouth chomping at the bit, rabid to get their hands on Donald Trump because they knew they would make a lot of money from him. But what's going on with billionaire Mark Cuban? Is he getting ready to run for president? In a recent announcement, entrepreneur and investor Mark Cuban has officially squashed rumors that he's running for president, emphasizing that he has no plans to run for the White House. Cuban, known for his role in Shark Tank, has decided to leave the show. On top of that, he's selling majority share stake in the Dallas Mavericks for $3.5 billion. This had many people wondering, is this guy getting ready to run for president or what's going on? But my guess is the dude's just freaking rich and wants to go live his life and maybe leave the business world behind. Now, speaking of billionaires, Elon Musk has just... Uh, 
has has just uh, squashed all the gossip uh, about him being anti-Semitic. He told advertisers to quit trying to ruin X and just advertise and grow your business. Elon took a bold stand against advertisers pulling their spending on Twitter, accusing them of blackmail and challenging their moral claims as evil. Despite the controversy, Musk issued an apology calling his initial post on Twitter his dumbest ever. Now, what he basically said was that there are Jews that are perpetuating this idea of the need to get rid of white people. He was hit all over Twitter and called anti-Semitic. However, he's saying he is not anti-Semitic. In fact, he is philo-Semitic, which means he loves Jewish people, expressing his occasional misstep in, com in communication. During his visit in Israel, Musk made it clear that he was not apologizing to anyone, and he doesn't give a damn what anyone thinks about him, but that it is stupid for businesses to stop advertising on Twitter or X because they're just hurting themselves He's got a great pr uh, platform that gets in front of millions, if not billions of eyeballs. Now, lastly, in a positive development, Hamas has released 16 additional hostages back to Israel. One of them was an American citizen. As part of an ongoing discussion to, to extend the Gaza ceasefire, international mediators are making headway with the negotiation. Israel has welcomed the release of this, these captives and hopes that more will be released. Many are hoping that with this slowdown and ceasefire, cooler heads will prevail and that this will become a permanent ceasefire. And then the two countries, with the help of third party mediators and negotiators, can end this war and end the killing on both sides. Now, before you go, I want to remind you that you are amazing. Just in case nobody tells you today, Stephen Gardner is telling you, you are amazing. Hey, I appreciate you stopping by. Please give this video a like and hit that subscribe button. We're almost to 1.5 million subscribers and I'd love to have you in my community. Now, here's that video with Senator Ron Johnson and here's another incredible video. Thanks so much and I will see you on the next video.